element that revolutionized the 19th century. It was to power Britain's railways for well over a hundred years. The heyday of the Great Western Railway was in the 30s, but by 1968, not only the Great Western, but steam itself had disappeared. But there are those who will not let the steam engine die. About 10 times a year, the Great Western Society at Didcot in Berkshire is in steam. With British Railways supervising them, the old engines of the Great Western Railway are revived for a brief run inside the area of the depot. There are two and a half thousand members of the society. Some of them live as far away as Canada, Australia, and even one on the South Pacific Island. And on the last open day, they had over 8,000 visitors. By open days, donations from members, by all kinds of other means of raising funds, they've been able to buy a great amount of old GWR stock, most of which is kept here at Didcot. But it's not just a matter of riding about in engines. Everything is being restored by the members themselves. It's a very big undertaking, for everything has to be tackled, from retransfer of the GWR crest to very much bigger jobs. Shannon is the oldest working steam engine in Britain. She was built in 1857, and she belongs to the National Collection, but the Transport Museum have entrusted her to the Society. She had ended her days nearby on the Wantage Tramway, but she's now being put back into working order. The carriages are being repainted in the old Great Western livery of chocolate and cream, but some of them need more than just a coat of paint. One of the old gas-lit carriages of 1904 is having its entire panelling and interior rebuilt and restored as nearly as possible to its original condition. In the sheds, a major overhaul is being carried out on one of the last generation of mainline engines. Burton Agnes Hall needs new boiler cladding and re-metalled coupling rods. Find the uh, thread at the end there. Okay, that's fine. How are you at that end? All right. The GWR always prided itself on its progressive policies, and this indeed was the shape of things to come. It's a GWR rail car of 1934, and the power unit is a diesel engine. They were elegant and very popular. By the time the war broke out, there were 18 of them in the system. The members have also bought this luxurious carriage. It's part of the Paddington to Plymouth Ocean Express, with which the GWR made a bid for the transatlantic passenger. The society plans to assemble a complete cross-section of everything the GWR ever owned, from the coffee pots, plates and glasses, to the biggest of their engines. Ultimately, their aim is to have at Didcot a full-scale working museum. <laughs> 